David Bruce here, new episode of Three for All. This is Three Gary Clark Jr. Licks from 2012, and I've had some requests to feature some of Gary's ideas. And if you're not familiar with his name or his music, Gary's a monster musician, for sure. He's been on the scene since the mid-90s. He's the cousin of W.C. Clark, the godfather of Austin Blues. I think he has five studio albums, a couple EPs, a couple live albums. He's won a couple Grammy Awards. And when Gary's not singing, because he has this very soulful, you know, vocal style, but when he's not singing his butt off, he's playing his butt off. You know, he's a great player. Elements of rock and blues and R&B and soul and funk. All kinds of stuff swirling around in this music. You know, really cool musician. Definitely a rising star, I think, in the modern age. Definitely in the last 10 years, I've really noticed, you know, his name popping up more in guitar magazines. He's popping up on TV, guest appearances, you know, live and in the studio. Monster musician, for sure. Like I mentioned, in the last 10 years, I've really noticed Gary's name and his music popping up almost everywhere. Television, radio, online, you know, looking around on YouTube or social media. You'll see clips of him playing, you know, with everybody. I've seen clips with him jamming with Eric Gales and John Mayer, and he was part of the 2010 Crossroads Festival. So Gary's definitely been around the block, and it just seems like he's going faster and faster around that block, which is great. But here's an image with some of the people he's worked with, either on stage or in the studio you know, in front of people or behind the scenes or whatever, but check this out. So the Lixness lesson came from a live appearance from 2012, and that's all the info I really had. The, uh, the footage didn't really have a description as far as where it was or the name of the venue, just the title and the year. But in the footage, you can see the cameraman definitely was locked on Gary. You know, there's some great footage. You can see him, you can hear him. And you can really reveal some of his elusive, you know, licks and secrets. There's some really cool licks in this lesson. So here we go. First lick's this precise bluesy bending idea, and it's really unusual, really cool. Something like this. One more time. And right there, we're basically playing with uh, C minor pentatonic. And he's basically, uh, he's manipulating this bend, and he's hitting, you know, three different notes with the same bent, you know, note. So he's really doing like that. But he's not doing it like that. He's bending. It's really weird. Like that. So it's very precise, like I said, because you're going, you know, from this F note up a half step. And then up a whole step and then back a half step, and then back to the original note, F, and then you're coming down E flat to that C, and then you're doing that at the end. So that's a very unusual lick, I like it. But it really makes you, it forces you to you really work on those precise bends because you want it to sound like this, but you're doing it like this. really unusual. One more time. You know, really cool lick though. Next we've got a blurry slip and slide lick in C minor blues. We're playing with a flat five and it's something like this. One more time. We're in C minor blues, and he basically slides off this G down to that F. So you're sliding that G to F, grabbing that E flat F, and then that C note back to E flat. And then right there, that's where you got the slip and slide. So it starts with a slide, and then you're doing like that. So you're sliding up to that F sharp, or I guess you could think of that as G flat since it's the flat five. So you're sliding up to that G flat and back to that F. So it's a really odd feeling lick because you're doing this. And then do that like basically four more times. C note right there, but that's a cool lick, and I love you know phrases that you know kind of manipulate or play with the flat five because you definitely hear it in blues, you hear it in metal, you hear it in lots of other styles of music. But that lick's really cool. It kind of reminds me of some other licks that I've played with, you know, using the flat five, 
But that blurry slip and slide action is really interesting. <laughs> You could also bend that note if you didn't want to slide it and you could actually kind of you know mix and match and do bends and slides if you wanted to you know something like that just kind of mixing up and just kind of mixing it up like that and kind of variating how you're playing this and I like doing that with licks, just to kind of change it up and mutate it into something else. Here's another blue scalar flat five idea, and we're in a different song and a different key. Now we're in the key of E, so E minor blues, and it's this funky jam, and Gary's using a wah, which I didn't kick a wah on for this, but the lick he played, something like this. <laughs> minor blues right here and we're starting on this D note walking all the way up to this B and then coming back down and ending on E right there like that so that's the first half and you want to do all that again when you get to that E note the second time you want to grab this G bend that up a whole step and then you're going to come down E minor blues and then end on that E note there on the 14th fret on the D string. So really slow. One more time. And then a tempo. kind of slippery sounding ideas like that. You could try it in other keys too. Move it down a minor third. You know, really cool lick. You know, move it again. You know, there it is in the key of A. And that lick sounds good wherever you play it, but back in the key of E, one more time. Alright, here's a bonus lick, and it's this funky E7 idea. I think it's definitely the coolest lick in the entire batch of ideas here. But uh, something like this. One more time. You know, definitely that uh, Texas blues sound for sure. Um, so we're in E7. And we're basically starting this uh, B to C sharp slide, and then targeting that E right there. And then he comes down, and once again he's hitting you know E blues, you know playing with that flat five like that. So that's the first part in that that first position right there. So one more time, really slow. There, after that uh, flat five manipulation, you're gonna grab you know that G, grab that A, and then you want to bend that G to A, and then end on E. That's really cool. And then right here, so right there, you're gonna slide this uh, B back to A, open G, and then slide A to B then the open G and then hammer on G sharp and then you're coming down E blues and open position right there so really slow and then at the end he's really just implying an E7 chord comes down that E blues run, grab the low E open, I'm hearing kind of a quick hammer on to that G sharp, he might actually just play the G sharp, but I'm adding that hammer on, 
high E open, and then grab that D note to the high E open. Like that. So all the way through it really slow. It just fits right in the mix and right in the rhythm. It's so cool. One more time. It's such a cool lick. I'm gonna be playing that for days. gonna wrap this look at three Gary Clark Jr. licks from 2012 and Gary's a very you know inspiring player a great you know feel and emotion and tone and he definitely you know, kicks on some fuzz I'm hearing Hendrix and maybe a little bit of Eddie Hazel definitely some Albert Collins and just you know all these great blues you know influenced ideas and I'm definitely a big blues fan I mean I'm from Chicago so I think it's just in my blood I love blues and blues rock and funk and R&B and jazz and soul music and definitely Gary kind of stirs all those styles up together when you hear him play and, you know, and sing and stuff where it's like, wow, he's just, you know, one minute he's funky, the next minute he's real bluesy, like maybe playing a slow blues. And then, you know, you just never really know. Sometimes it's soulful kind of R&B thing and then a blues rock thing and, you know, starts doing some fuzzed out, you know, Hendrix type solo. And it's really exciting to hear him just kind of shift through all these different, you know, styles and forms and decades of music. You know, I'm hearing... 50s and 60s and 70s, you know, all wrapped up in his music, along with modern stuff, too. I mean, there's some hip-hop and, and some other things, you know, hiding in his music, too, where it's like, wow, he's all over the place. Really cool stuff. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to that lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.